record. Okay, so 6.7 integers and exponents, and we're going to touch a little bit on scientific notation. Can you do those these two problems for me real quick? Tell me what you get for the first one. Tell me what you get for the second one. Okay, so let's go back and look at these real quick. So remember, we can, we can expand these out if we want. and then cross off like ones in the numerator and denominator so we get the x squared. Now we also can use that shortcut and subtract the exponents, right? So either way works there to get that solution. Same with the other one. We can expand it cross off five in the numerator, five in the denominator, and we're left with a one in the numerator, x squared in the denominator. Now for this one, we would do one over x and then seven minus five because our denominator is larger. So that's how we got the x squared in the denominator because we just put our subtraction wherever the, the largest exponent is. That helps us get it in the right spot. But what if I made a mistake? What if I didn't do it that way? What if I did, whoops, that's an x, x to the seventh, and I subtract a numerator minus denominator. Now what do I get for my exponent? Throw it in the chat. What do you get for your exponent now? If I do 5 minus 7. Yeah, a negative 2. Well, See. So what's the correct answer here? 5 over x to the 5th divided by x to the 7th, we've got two different answers. I mean, they're both look like they're correct work, but what's wrong with this one is we can't have negative exponents. For an answer. Oops, bring it on up. We cannot have negative exponents for an answer. Okay. But you might sometimes come across negative exponents in the problems you're given or in your work. So if you were to subtract that, the second one, numerator minus denominator, and you got the negative two, we just have to take a step and change that to a positive exponent. And this, is change, how we change that negative exponent to a positive exponent. So if it's a negative exponent on a whole number or on, in the numerator, it ends up going to the denominator and that exponent changes to positive. 
And you can kind of see that happening right here. That x to the negative 2 is the same answer as 1 over x squared. Changing that negative 2 to a positive, but doing the reciprocal of your base. And then the other way is sometimes you'll see a negative exponent in the denominator. Basically what that means is you need to change it to positive and do the reciprocal of that base. So you would put it in the numerator then. <coughs> so I've got four problems here. So I'm going to give you a minute. Go through each of those problems and tell me how you would write them using only positive exponents. So write using positive exponents. And just keep your answers to yourself. You don't need to put them in the chat. Give me a, a thumbs up or a done when you're done. Still working? Anybody ready for me to go on? Okay, well I'm going to start looking at these. So here, two to the negative 3. So I'm going to follow this model right here and I'm just going to take this to the denominator and make it a positive 3 instead of a negative. Okay. Now since that's a number and that exponent is not extremely large, let's go ahead and change it to a actual just fraction number, so 2 to the third power is 8. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, right? Okay. 10 to the negative 7, it's going to be 1 over 10 to the seventh power. I'm not going to expand that one because that's going to be pretty large. Yeah, we could, but I'm not going to. And then here, 1 over y to the negative 4. Well, to get rid of that negative 4 exponent, we need to do the reciprocal and change it to positive. I'm kind of writing it as the reciprocal with a 1 under it, but we don't need the 1 under it, so that's just y to the positive 4. And then the next one. 1 over 2 to the negative 4, to get rid of the negative exponent, do the reciprocal. And then 2 to the 4th power is 16. Okay, any questions there? Okay. 
No questions? Okay, can I flip this? Anybody need me to wait? Like I said, there are lots of examples today, but there's not a lot of work to go with them. <laughs> so. so this one says quotient to a negative exponent, which really just means like a fraction. Or division. So when I have a fraction or division inside the parentheses and it's raised to a negative exponent, what happened here? This just gets flipped or it gets changed to its reciprocal and that becomes positive. Okay. Now, another way you might want to look at that is that we can put that negative N with both the A and the B. We did that before with our power rules. And now to change the A to positive, it goes in the denominator. To change the B to positive, it goes in the numerator. And now we can just write that as B over A to the n power. But if you kind of think of it like this, this is really kind of the shortcut. This is showing all the steps to it. So can you go ahead and do those next two examples? and simplify them also because those exponents are not extremely large. So let's simplify them down. If you finish both of them, let me know in the chat. Quiz two, right? Okay, second. so let's look at this together. So here, I have a negative four as an exponent. So according to this little rule, what I can do is I'm gonna change it to positive, and then I'm gonna do the reciprocal inside. That's a funny three. And then I can distribute my four in. So it's three to the fourth, two to the fourth, So three to the fourth power is three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. And then two to the fourth power is, two times two is four, times two is 16, times two is 32. Nope, 16, I want one too many. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So it's 81 over 16. That cannot be reduced. Okay. Okay, let's look at the next one. It's a negative 2 exponent, so let's change it to a positive 2 exponent. Flip what's inside. Share that exponent with the numerator and the denominator. So we're gonna get n squared over 36m squared. Can you guys read that okay? So I'll give you like three minutes to finish these six problems.
Okay, let's look at the next two. So one of the things we have to remember here is order of operations. Because we've got multiplying and exponents, remember our order of operations is grouping symbols, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. So, no grouping symbols, but I do have an exponent, so I have to do my exponent first. So three to the negative one, we'll take that to the denominator and make it three to the first. And put that six under a, over a one if I want to. Multiply across, and let's divide that out. So there we would get an answer of positive 2. So the next one, we're going to start with grouping symbols. We have grouping symbols that I can actually do something in. So this is going to be 18 to the negative 1. Take care of that negative exponent, change it to positive by taking that 18 to the denominator. And it has an exponent of a 1, but we really wouldn't put that on there. It's that understood exponent. So it's 1 over 18. Okay, any questions there? We're all good? Okay, so now starting to come up. Oh, do I need to go back? when we have a power to a power, what's the shortcut, what's the rule that I do with these? I'm gonna put it in the chat. What do I do with these? Power to a power. That's where we multiply. So that's why we, you know, we can, if I had z to the third to the fifth power, like a positive five, I could expand this. One, two, three, four, five, right? And then I could make each of these z to the thirds, z times z times z. Count how many z's I have here, and it's going to be z to the 15th. That's how we got our rule that we would do 3 times 5. But now we got those rules so that we could do these kinds of problems now because I can't expand that a negative five times because here I expanded it five times because I had an exponent of a five. Now I have to just rely on my rule and go back and remember what it is. So it's going to be multiplying. So I'm going to have z to the three times negative five, which is z to the negative 15. Okay, so I'm going to take care 
of that multiplication of powers. And then I can rewrite this with a positive exponent by taking it to the denominator. Then our next one here, x to the negative 4 times x to the 6. Well, let's do that multiplication. Now, when you multiply with your exponents, what am I going to do with the exponents? Somebody let me know in the chat. What am I going to do with these exponents? Multiply them as one of two of our answers. So if they were positive exponents, remember, we can just expand each of them and count them up. So this would be x to the tenth. So did I multiply those? When we're multiplying with the same base, then we add our exponents. So this is x to the negative 4 plus 6, which is going to be x to the positive 2. And we got to try to keep straight. We multiply here when it's kind of like distribution, when they're right next to each other with a parenthesis. Here, when we're multiplying problems with the same base, then we add the exponents. Okay, any questions there? It's just a lot of remembering all the little different cases. Okay, let's look at these two. So it's multiplying. So I know when I'm multiplying with the same base, I'm going to be doing what to my exponents? Multiplying with the same base, I'm going to be doing what? Can you put it in the chat with my exponents? Thank you, Anise. Add them. And what I might do is go ahead and group the like ones together. Just kind of rearranging the order here, because when I'm multiplying, order doesn't matter, right? Now go through and add my exponents. So m to the 4 plus negative 5 is going to be m to the negative 1. And here this is negative 3 and negative 2 will be negative 5. Can I leave my answer like that? Let me know in the chat. Send me a message. Can I leave my answer like that? Yes or no? Nope, nope, nope. Can't have negative exponents. So the m goes to the bottom with an exponent of a 1. You can leave that on or off. Usually we would leave the 1's off. The n to the negative 5 goes to the denominator. Make sure you keep that placeholder of that 1 up in the numerator. So I'm just going to write it without the exponent. So 1 over m times n to the fifth. <clears throat> 
Any questions so far? Okay, the last one here in this type before we look at scientific notation is with Don't we have another one left on the right hand side there? Oh, yeah. Okay, I was like, I wrote it down. <laughs> okay, I wrote too big over here, so I lost track of it. Let's, let's do this one real quick. Let's do the one with the division. What do we do with our exponents when we're dividing? So let's see, what if I had x to the eighth over x squared and I expanded? You can move it over a little bit, please. Perfect, thank you. I cross those off, I get x to the sixth. So what do I do with those exponents? What's the rule that I can use? are quiet today. No. Subtract the exponents. <clears throat> so this is going to be x to the 8 minus negative 3. Got to be careful there. So double negative is going to change to positive. rewrite it. You could just change it right in there. So that's going to be x to the 11th. Any questions on that one? Let's go back up here to this one. We have an exponent outside the parenthesis. So it's going to get multiplied in to the exponents inside. Where we're kind of distributing it in. That 5 has an exponent of a 1 on it. So this is going to be 5 squared. Multiply these. So negative 4 times positive 2 is going to be x to the negative 8. Since that x has a negative exponent, I have to take it to the denominator. And the 5 squared we can change to 25. Any questions there? Make sure everybody has that down. Okay, so scientific notation here. So if I'm given there where it's written in blue, the 0 0.0052, and I want to write that in scientific notation, 
the first number in our scientific notation always has the decimal right after the first number. So we would, that's what this arrow is here for. We're going to move the, a decimal point into, in between the 5 and the 2. And then we're going to count how many decimal points we moved it over. 1, 2, 3. And we put times 10 to the negative 3. That's scientific notation. Now, if we wanted, if it was going backwards, so say if I don't do a different number, if I had 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4, when it's negative, it's because it came from a very small number. So this 36 is going to go at the back end. My decimal was here and I'm going to move it over to the left four spaces. One, two, three, four. And then fill in each of those with a zero. So it will be point zero, 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 three, six. Then when you're starting with a very large number and you want to put it in scientific notation, you still got to take you're going to take that decimal that's in the back and put it in between your first right after your first numeric number. So it'd be 3.7 and then how many spaces did we move it? 1 2 3 4. That's why we have 10 to the 4. So what if I have something like this? 400, whoops, you know what, I'm going to do this. 4.16 times 10 to the third. Scientific notation because that decimal's right after the first number. But let's expand it. We have an exponent of a 3, so we're going to take our decimal and move it over to the right 3. 1, 2, 3. So your solution there would be 4,160.